And uh, I think James Gorman can probably appreciate that um, the fact that the medal just broke is a perfectly Australian experience because <laughs> if you're Australian, the first thing you do any time is to make a self-deprecating remark. And of course, the self-deprecating remark at this point has to be something like, of course, they gave me the dud medal, um, <laughs> being Australian. Um, uh, thanks, thanks a million, Connie, for your willingness to be here. And I, I remember exactly how this happened that, uh, that Connie uh, graciously agreed to be with with us tonight, with us all tonight. It's fantastic to have her here. There are also some wonderful uh, alums of the Wharton School in the room, and it's just a, it's an honour for me always to represent the school. And thanks to the Foreign Policy Association um, for all that you do and for uh, awarding me with this incredible honour this evening. Um, Connie's absolutely right that. I think the world of business schools today is actually being driven by exactly the same forces uh, that are affecting all of you in the real world of business. You know, it's a combination of technology and globalization which affect everything that we do. Um, you may not know that the Wharton School actually is, uh, is leveraging online probably more than anybody else. Uh, we've been in the, the brave new world of MOOCs now for massive open online classes for more than three years, but there are a lot of threes here. We have over three million people having already taken our online classes. Uh, we've got 40 or 50 Wharton faculty who've now done online teaching. Uh, and good news for us, because we do have to balance the books at the end of the day, we're starting actually now to, uh, to charge a modest price for a lot of our online classes. And for anyone who's uh, in the room who's done online, you know that the normal criticism is that people don't complete. Uh, I think that's because a lot of people do education online at purely out of interest. But um, we start giving credentials for our online uh, education. It's not about degrees. Um, and people complete. Completion rates go to 90%. And interestingly, 75 or 80% of our online learners are outside the United States. And most of them have degrees already. And they're getting real value from what we're doing. So that's the technology piece, it's very important. But um, let me speak about the global piece for a second because uh, I, I have a weird accent, James Gorman has a weird accent. Uh, Australians who've, who've lived abroad tend to have weird accents. But let me tell you about my, I don't know what your story is, James. My story about the United States is one of incredible thanks because you know I grew up in Canberra Canberra makes Washington look like a sort of broad-based town and also interesting. <laughs> Everyone I knew in Canberra, including my father, my brother, my sister, worked their entire life in the Australian government. And when I graduated from university in Australia, I was actually offered a job in the Australian Foreign Service. I didn't take it. I came to the US to do a PhD, and it literally changed my life uh, in ways that I could never have expected. Um, and I, I noticed uh, in the Foreign Policy Association video, there were so many distinguished secretaries of state uh, and other people in the video. You know, I got a job at Stanford University and I thought it was in Connecticut. <laughs> because I looked on the map and the only thing I saw was Stanford. Right? It was a long way from Canberra to Palo Alto. And Condi Rice was an assistant professor with me at Stanford. You know, I just couldn't have imagined that growing up uh, in Canberra, in Australia. And I got to know George Schultz as well when I was in Palo Alto. What I think about that is really two things. One, just the debt of gratitude I feel to this country uh, is immeasurable. But second, I think the, the, this innovation immigration nexus that's been at the core of the American economy for 100 years is an extraordinary asset of this country, an asset that no other country in the world possesses, quite frankly. Um, and I'm worried about it now. Uh, my, I'll tell you another story. My friend Ken Mollis is in the room. Ken probably doesn't know that somebody who wants to work in his bank is actually my research assistant at the moment. And this is a true story. You can't make this stuff up. Um, and my research assistant is a Korean who speaks fluent Mandarin and is really good with numbers. The guy's taking eight classes this semester because the best way for him to stay in the US is to get a STEM exemption to allow him to stay in the US longer. 
He's getting a statistics credential because it'll help him say in this country. You know, if we can't, if we can't make high skilled migration a win-win in the US, uh, I, I'm, really, I'm really concerned about the future. So when I think about the US, I, I just have this incredible personal thanks. I have an incredible admiration for the role that migrants have played in this country, not least economically over its entire history. But I also think, and the Foreign Policy Association has been in the vanguard here, that there's been a natural parochialism to the US as well. And the parochialism for me is perfectly understandable. I'm a sort of economist type, so I think things are in equilibrium. The US has been able to be a parochial country because everyone from all around the world has come here for 150 years. The US has not needed to go to the world so much because the world's always come here. I think in the 21st century, that's gonna to have to get balanced a little more, and we all are gonna to have to go to the world more. And you know, people think about Wharton as a finance school that's, that's got this umbilical cord connection to Wall Street. You probably don't know that the Wharton School has founded three business schools in Asia in the past 20 years, one in Thailand, one in India, and one in Singapore. We also recently, I'm sitting next to the Chinese Consul General, um, we opened a facility in Beijing uh, in September, and in fact, Colin Powell was there to, to, open, to open the facility for us. I'm a, I'm a big believer in balancing the fact that the world will come to the US with, with having the world, uh, the US go to the world. And obviously, uh, it's not just China. You know, I, was, I was telling Connie Duckworth that I was in Dubai uh, 10 days ago, I had three institutions say they wanted to partner with the Wharton School to bring Wharton education to the Gulf uh, in a period of 30 hours that I was on the ground. Um, it is a global world. Uh, we're in a global epicenter here in New York. And uh, as I said, I think the, um, the power of the US as a magnet for ambitious, talented people from around the world has been an incredible secret source of this country for a very long time. Long may it last, but I think we all know that going to the world is something we should do too. Um, and I'm sure this is the Academy Award music wrap up here. <laughs> that was my last sentence. I think getting the balance right is what, we, it's what in, is in all of our interests. And I'm so pleased to be uh, leading a global institution that's trying to do that. Thank you very much.